yeah, it's a pretty special woodland this. You can see again with the element of grazing and browsing. So there's a couple of herds of um, cows that graze this woodland and it, okay. it's in just a, the right sort of level and density to create quite a really nice patchy array of habitats without damaging the regeneration of the trees. And you've got so much dead wood around and decaying yeah, wood, yeah. which is so important, obviously well, as a component of the ecosystem. Well, because the understory is rich, but also really easy for us to navigate yeah. as well. Yeah, it's, you know, sometimes it's a battle, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I mean, look at this tree here with the, the decaying wood and the, the branches that have fallen down. This is what a woodland should look like. Yeah. Messy and full of life. This is a pretty credible specimen, isn't it, Ben? Pretty awesome, isn't it? Absolutely. Now, and I, I know when uh, these days with my photography, I'm often looking for not just individual trees, but a, a collection, you know, kind of working on that sense of community in yeah. the woods. But this from down there was shining like a beacon, wasn't it? Really <laughs> it really was. So we just uh, made a beeline for this and what an incredible tree. We've got that indicator species again of the yep. polypody ferns. lots of moss. Yeah. Well, I say lots of moss, the entire <laughs> tree is just moss, <laughs> <laughs> basically. Yeah, and it's it's very different to the others surrounding it, isn't it? With uh, with these branches just sprawling out quite low down. Coming right out. Yeah. I mean, you, you tell me if I'm right here, but my guess is that it's perhaps been nibbled back um, in its very early stages. And at that point, it sort of sent out these new limbs and it's just gone on from there undisturbed. I imagine that's a, that's a pretty good guess. Sometimes this is a good indication of coppicing, but in this particular case, um, this is an ancient area of woodland pasture. So mm. has probably had browsing animals in and out of this area. It's a, it's a common land. So would have had browsing animals here for hundreds of years. Um, and so, yeah, that's probably a, it's a very good guess that yeah, it's yeah. created this incredible character almost like an octopus of these branches exactly, coming out from yeah. the very base spreading out making the most of this circle of light basically in amongst the forest here it's sort of capitalized yeah. on this area which just has a scattering of hawthorns around it at least we've got rain it's so good. the colors are looking it's really good. good um in all honesty I, th I think i want to try and make a photograph of this looking forward to it so yeah Fantastic. Let's, let's, let's give it a go let's do it the ground just rises up here so it makes sense to get some elevation and then hopefully use the dark canopy of the oaks in the background as our as our backdrop. Fantastic. Really work on the character of this. Good. Let's have a look. It. So in woodland photography these days, Ben, I actually I'm often drawn to the more complex images. You know, multiple different elements and numerous trees and other things incorporated because it's about kind of capturing the diversity and the complexity of this environment. Uh, those sort of more complex images that don't always necessarily work as a small image on social media, but print them and everything just comes mm. to life. However, when you get a tree as fantastic as this one, an incredible standalone character, a simple portrait mm. just works really, really well. Keep it simple uh, because the tree does all uh, the talking for us, really. Having said that, what appears as something very simple still needs some kind of close attention to detail. So. Um, what I've done here is position the tripod quite high. Yep. And the reason for that is, is to try and take advantage of that oak canopy backdrop before the sky comes in issue. There is a bit of a compromise at the top there. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a little bit sort of squashed up, but it's fine. Yeah. I've just tried to give these branches that hang down a little bit of space and they create a top frame. We've got a nice consistent bottom edge with yep. the bracken, but then I've allowed these reaching branches to disappear mm. off the edge of the frame not trying to tell the whole story, leave a bit to the imagination, just kind of contain the most interesting uh, characterful parts of this tree. But also where we've positioned vertically and horizontally is that we've got all these different limbs separated out there. This has given some space. That one that's just reaching out into the distance and catching the light is getting some space. Um, and everything's balanced in terms of form of the tree, but also negative space amongst the branches as well. But one of the key things that I really wanted to point out is this aspect ratio. So you can the standard format for the full frame is three by two, but I've gone for 16, nine here. Mm. And this is a common thing with aspect ratio. People sometimes choose it as a practical choice just to kind of contain elements in the frame. Yeah. Sometimes missing the fact that actually it's part and parcel of the feeling, the emotion, the emphasis of the image. 
So because looking at this tree, we've got this real strong sense of sprawling, reaching branches. So to give more emphasis, emphasis to that kind of sense of lateral reach, we choose a more letterbox yep. aspect ratio. Makes sense. Um, because if you were to bring in just as much left to right, but more top to bottom, the emphasis would change slightly and you won't get the same feeling of just these beautiful sprawling octopus-like limbs you were saying just reaching out across the frame. I think the advantage that you've got is working locally and it's just one of those amazing trees that you could come back to time and time again, observe it through yeah. the seasons and try and capture it through in some really atmospheric conditions <laughs> because this deserves many, many yeah, visits, yeah, I think. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. yeah, I look forward to seeing what you do with it in, in the future. No, absolutely. Um, but a, a really fine specimen. Brilliant. So as it is, <laughs> just gathering the light under there, it still works as an image today. Beautiful shot. Fantastic. Good stuff. Yeah, this reminds me a little bit of yesterday. <laughs> Battling with the branches to get into the right position. I mean, yeah. uh, I don't know, there's something enjoyable about just getting sort of stuck into it and the awkwardness of being yeah. amongst the undergrowth, trying to get the right angle. Yeah. But I couldn't pass the opportunity to photograph this willow tree. Fantastic. And I'm assuming this is here because of it's such a damp environment. Exactly, yeah. We've got these little hollows that are flatter that have got sort of marshy, boggy conditions. <laughs> yeah. Everything's so much richer today, isn't it? With this, it's amazing it is. the difference that the rain makes. It is. But we're also quite fortunate that it's we're sheltered here and it's not so harsh that it's making the work difficult. That's it. It's a good balance, isn't it? Just providing that sort of atmospheric edge. Yeah. It's not completely being a deluge of moisture. Excuse me, branch. I know you're probably on the way out anyway, but I just need to move you out the way. Ah, oh, just those wonderful colours. Look at that. Oh, wow. That's awesome. <laughs> Moss. Fantastic. It really comes. I mean, this is, you know, this is the feature of that makes these environments rainforest, really, is the fact that you have all of that vegetation just growing on top of each other, all the mosses and ferns and That's it, yeah. and lichens. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to be an oak forest, an oak tree. You know, this is a willow tree and it's providing as, uh, as much in the way of the, the moss and epiphyte habitat as uh, as many of the other oaks around here yeah but that is uh that's fantastic isn't that lovely that i mean that's really gorgeous it's what's really helping here actually is the darkness yeah uh which is really standing out against that pocket of light further back so it's yep. really bright back there it's not some it's not sky um but that pocket of light which is hitting the the bracken in the in the open area but what i'm trying to do as close as i can is get this fern that's yeah. just nestled into yeah. where this willow's split Super. just sat in the base there which is a really nice home for it isn't it Super. Um, and then we've got this bit more earthy down in the foundation of the image across here uh, which is making a nice contrast to the lushness of the yeah. green which dominates the scene um, but another 16.9 just to yep. emphasize the sprawling nature and then focus right in the middle there Beautiful. Wait for a calm spot. Light's just lifting. Beautiful. A bit too much now that yeah. now the sun's out. Um, God, the weather. <laughs> <laughs> Classic Wales. Yeah. Chucking it down one minute. Blowing an absolute. I'm sure it'll disappear in a second and then we'll we'll make that image.
Hey Ben, how are you doing? Fine, Just yeah. been back to the car for a refuel, have you? Yeah. yeah. Good stuff. How's it going? Yeah, okay, fantastic tree here. It's just a, the most amazing spot. Got this snap branch, but struggling with the, the sun keeps popping out. Yeah. Uh, and it's very, very windy up here. Yeah. So I'm thinking we should we'll just go back down get, the hillside some, somewhere yeah. more sheltered. Sounds good. And it has got, it's got a wonderful sort of damp feeling down that yeah. hillside as well. So yeah, I'll pack this up because I'm not sure this is a keeper. Yep. And then we'll uh, continue our explorations. Sounds good. Now this is a really interesting area. Is this Isn't is it? like a circle of stone? Yeah, and it's a, yeah. And with these old trees as well, it has a slightly kind of creepy feel to it. It's quite a Lord of the Rings-esque. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I wonder if it's an old sheep pen or something, you know, wait, like even before maybe the woodland oh, okay. properly came up around this particular area, but it's hard to say. I don't know enough about the history of this site. Yeah. I mean, that tree back there looks oh my phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, so there's a gap here, so. This is the angle, I think, Ben. Come, yeah. come and have a look. Wow. So we've got the uh, this kind of half dead rowan. Yeah. Some berries still clinging on, and then the, that big dark oak that we saw from back there on the edge yeah. of this circle of stone, uh, and then one back there. So we're getting depth, yeah. different species, beautiful texture and detail with all the moss and the bracken down at the base there. Some kind of earthy autumn colours coming through. Got to make an image, pretty, aren't we? That looks pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah let's give it a go. Get set it. up. Fantastic. A bit of a tricky balancing act, this one. Um, but I mean, just look at how those layers are building up. Absolutely yeah. fantastic. Um, but just light, dark, shifting color, beautiful vanishing point back there. I think this commands a bit more of our time, awesome. to be honest. Yeah. Um, but it looks good, doesn't it? Like I mean, it is. I'm being very idealist here yeah, because yeah. I'm making this image because I see this as a really interesting, mm. diverse uh, composition. Yeah. Um, the way the boulders move through the scene, the yeah. rhythm of the, the bracken, yeah. the way the, the recession of trees through the scene as well is, is just beautiful. And we've seen some fantastic specimens today and I wanted some like a scene with multiple yeah, specimens. Yeah, just saying that. that yeah. So something a bit more complex, the splash of color with the roaring berries. Uh, it's just lovely. Yeah. But what I mean by being idealist is that I'm making this image to practice a composition, but this is one where I really, really do want to photograph it in the stuff fog, yeah. just to really emphasize those layers that we've got through the scene, but also because we're working with patches of light in the sky. Yeah and I'd like those to soften yeah. so that one of our brightest spots is actually our vanishing point yeah. there where we can see is probably another rowan back yep, there. That's it, yeah. Um, so yeah, mm. it's looking good though, that's isn't it? Is, yeah. And the white balance kind of mo shooting more on the cooler yeah. side yeah. is helping to separate out those warmer tones from the cooler tones, keeping yeah. the coolness. Because it's very, it's very tricky in woods when it's everything's very green and yellow, shoot too warm and it all kind of mushes yeah. together. Yeah. So you yeah. need to sometimes work at separating those those colours out a little bit. I feel as if this rowan tree here needs a bit more space, yeah. but I don't want to open up this empty space over here yeah. too much. Yeah. So I don't, I'm not entirely settled yet, and the wind's too <laughs> strong, <laughs> uh, but I, I'm going to keep working it and then see if I can fine tune the composition, but the finished image I think would have to come in the future. Well, you're welcome back. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Oh, you'll be you'll be back here next week. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs>
how cool were some of those trees? What a delight it was to find and photograph them. I hope you enjoyed that third episode from the series and also listening to Ben's commentary as we explored that beautiful patch of Atlantic rainforest. Thank you to Ben for his help and hospitality. I'll pop some links in the description below so you can find his various online profiles. The following day I managed some more wet woodland photography on my own so I'll have another episode coming very soon. As always, please check out my website for books, prints and other ways to support my work. But thank you very much for watching this episode and I'll see you again very soon. Mm -hmm.